Hello and welcome to CNB Bazaar Buzz. This is Amir Naik, and we'll be getting you all the updates from the world of two wheelers and four wheelers. Now, come April 2019, there are a lot of two wheelers that will be launched, and that's because regulations are coming in. That's why we had two two wheeler makers bringing in bikes this week. We also had Mahindra bringing in the XUV 300. So, all that and more on this episode. But here's a quick look at what to expect now. We kickstart things with the XUV 300 launch. Honda brings in the CB300R to India. Triumph brings in the 2019 Street Twin and the Street Scrambler. And finally, we have the Steel Bird Helmet, which allows you to use your phone on the go. Well, let's kickstart things with a subcompact SUV. Well, that's the biggest market that we have now. 23% growth year on year. And it's just growing. It's just trending in the country. And Mahindra is the latest in that uh, gamut of manufacturers to bring in SUVs to the market. Well, here it is. Prices and all the details you want about the XUV300. The Mahindra XUV300 is finally here. It is derived from the Sangyong Tivoli and is essentially a shortened version of it. But it packs in a bit more style and many more features. The new XUV300 has the goods to be the next big thing in the subcompact SUV segment in India. We have already driven the car and we quite like the design of the new XUV300. It is edgy and stylish. We like the way the front end looks. The slim grille is accentuated by the LED projector headlamps and daytime running lamps giving it a sophisticated look. The fog lamps get black housing and are sort of connected to the headlamp by a thin DRL strip. The cabin of the Mahindra XUV300 is a nice place to be in. The upholstery is done in white leatherette material and the dashboard gets black treatment. The fit and finish inside is good with minimum buttons and a clean uncluttered look. Overall, the cabin gets a dual tone black and white setting. The touchscreen infotainment system offers smartphone connectivity in form of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto along with navigation as well. There are a bunch of other features such as modes for the steering feel dual zone air conditioner and a sunroof as well. Mahindra will also offer 7 airbags on the top spec variant of the XUV. Apart from that, dual airbags along with anti-lock brakes are standard on all variants along with Isofix child seat anchors. You also get parking sensors up front and at the rear along with the parking camera. The car also has hill start assist. Mahindra will offer a 1.2 litre petrol and a 1.5 litre diesel engine on the XUV300. The petrol engine makes 110 brake horsepower and 200 newton meters of peak torque, while the diesel engine pumps out 115 brake horsepower and churns out a class leading torque of 300 newton meters. A 6 speed gearbox is standard and there will be no automatic for now. The XUV300 is well equipped to take on its rivals such as the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza, Ford EcoSport and the Tata Nexon in terms of features and performance. The XUV300 will be offered in 4 variants which are W4, W6, W8 and the top spec W8 optional variant 
which gets all the bells and whistles, making it a good proposition in the subcompact SUV segment in the country. Well, certainly a great price for the XUV300. Some might say it is pricier. We certainly do. It's a little overpriced, but uh, given the fact that there are so many options available, given the fact that there are so many, uh, there are two powertrains on offer, good amount of power too on both the powertrains, and uh, good amount of torque on both too. But the lack of automatic, uh, the lack of an automatic gearbox certainly uh, might pinch Mahindra at uh, in the beginning. But uh, of course, that too is in the making. Well, let's move on to another launch that happened this week, the Honda CB300R, and it's the one we've been looking forward to. Hello, that's the newest Honda in the market, the new Honda CB300R. Now this one is unlike any Honda that you've seen on the streets of India. This one takes design inspiration from the Honda Neo Sports Cafe. Of course, there's a bigger Honda like this in the market, the CB1000R, that also takes design from the same Neo Sports Cafe concept. It's uh, actually a modern take on a cafe racer styling. So, very nice looking motorcycle, of course this one is not made in India, it's assembled in India, so assembled from completely knockdown kits or CKD kits and it's priced at 241,000 rupees ex showroom pan India. Now this one's powered by a 286cc single cylinder double overhead cam engine which makes about 30 bhp of power at 8000 rpm and about 27 odd newton inches of torque and we're told it's a free revving engine, of course we'll get to ride it very soon and the mass is centralized quite in the middle where the center of gravity should be that's what we're told in the presentation so this one is expected to be a nimble handler and a great uh, package overall a 41 millimeter upside down front forks a hubless disc with uh, nissan calipers of course it's got standard dual channel abs and the abs is powered by a ime or inertial measurement unit so what it does is it calculates the dynamics of the bike, the pitch, roll and yaw, and accordingly adjust the distribution of the ABS on both wheels. And uh, it's got LED lighting all around. If you come here, I'll show you a very, very nice looking, very modern looking LED headlight, full LED headlight, full LED blinkers, full LED blinkers. These are LED as well. Those are LED as well and of course it gets a LCD instrument panel. Uh, this one is quite nice looking, quite neat looking. It's got speed, it's got a RPM, it's got average fuel, it's got a fuel bar and all those nitty gritty details that you want. LED tail light as well, upswept uh, exhaust system and so that's the enough tubular steel and pressed steel frame. It's a completely, completely new bike. That's the new Honda CB300R, priced at 2,41,000 rupees ex showroom Pan India. Now, at that price, what does it take on? It takes on directly the KTM 390 Duke and, of course, the BMW GT10 R. But slightly more price, you also get the Royal Enfield Interceptor 650. What do you think about the pricing? Well, 2,41,000 looks good enough. It's an assembled bike in India. But if it was 10 to 15,000 less expensive, that would have made it even more value. But of course, uh, bookings have already started, 5,000 rupees. It's available in 23 cities across India right now, from the length and breadth across the country. 220, 230 bikes have already been booked, and Honda says three month capacity has been sold out so far, it's booked so far, booked out so far. Well, the problem with the CB300R is that if you want it now, you won't get it immediately. 
there's a waiting period and quite a long one that too from what dealers tell us. But let's move on to another launch that happened, another two-wheeler launch that happened. Something that we have really been looking forward to, the 2019 updated Street Twin and Street Scrambler. This is the most popular Triumph motorcycle model, not only in India, but across the world. Needless to say, this is the largest selling Triumph motorcycle model in India, that's the Street Twin, and it gets significantly updated for 2019. What's new? Well, for starters, there's some cosmetic changes. The graphics are new, the side panel graphics are new, but the changes are inside the engine. It's not an all new engine per se, but there are a lot of changes inside the components. The balancer shaft, dead shaft, a lot of components inside, magnesium cam cover, everything is lighter inside. Triumph has not gone overboard with updating the engine completely, but what they've done is change the components, made it lighter, and change the fueling, the throttle maps. The result, this one gives about 10 bhp more power than the outgoing model. It now makes about 64 bhp of power and 80 newton meters of torque, which kicks in at about 3800 rpm. And the new engine, the updated engine, also gets a higher rev limit, so it revs to about 7500 rpm. So, if the outgoing model felt a little lacking in terms of top and power, this one addresses that. What's also new is the suspension. It gets cartridge type front forks, which are said to uh, offer better stability, better handling. It gets Brembo brakes now and dual channel ABS standard, of course, and it gets switchable traction control. Uh, other changes are more or less cosmetic. Uh, new instrument panel, slightly new, updated uh, brackets for the headlight. Headlight bezel is new and the seat has been moved slightly upward. This one of course is a custom seat, this is not a stock seat, but the seat is different and uh, what is also important for India is the price. This one is priced at 745,000 X showroom. That's almost 25,000 rupees cheaper than the outgoing model. More electronics, of course it gets Rider modes now, the outgoing model had ride by wire, yes, but no rider modes. This one gets a rain and road riding mode, which adjusts the throttle control, traction control settings according to what your settings are. Rain mode allows for a lot less throttle control, so you don't slip, and traction control is dialed up higher, so it aids in slippery conditions. So, all that more power, more traction control, updated styling new suspension, new brakes, and at a price which is 25,000 rupees cheaper than the outgoing model. How is that possible? Well, the outgoing model was assembled here in India with from completely knocked down or CKD kits. This one is made in Thailand and brought into India under free trade agreement. The tax structures are different, so it makes more sense to get it from Thailand. That's how Triumph has been able to price it at that. 7,45,000 rupees X showroom, the most popular Triumph model, that's the 2019 Triumph Street Twin. So this is a new Triumph Street Scrambler. It's based on the Street Twin platform, same 900cc parallel to an engine, but this one's got slightly more changes, the different changes. For starters, it gets spoke wheels, and the front wheel is a 19-inch front wheel. It gets different uh, dual sport rubber, Medzilla Torrance tires, uh, Kayaba front fork, of course, but this one is spaced out slightly wider and uh, give it a more purposeful stance. And of course, the handlebar is wider and taller as well, so it gives you a more upright riding position to aid in off-road riding. Uh, the Street Scrambler has the same and this is parallel twin, the same changes, uh, the components are lighter so this one makes about the same power, 64 bhp or power and it revs freer than the outgoing model to 7500 rpm and it makes the same amount of torque, the engine makes about 80 newton meters of torque but on the Street Scrambler it makes the torque at slightly lower revs, on the Street Twin 80 newton meters is made at 3800 rpm but on the Street Scrambler, that same amount of torque, the peak torque kicks in at 3200 RPM. What that does is when you're riding off-road, you don't have to ring open a throttle too much. With minimal throttle inputs, you can power out, slide out, and this aids in off-road riding. 
This one, of course, is kitted out with a lot of aftermarket parts. This beak is aftermarket. This headlight bezel is aftermarket. These are aftermarket, and the rear shocks are aftermarket as well. KIB front forks, cartridge type, which aid in more stability, better handling. These are spaced out a little wider, like we said. Spoke wheels on the street scrambler, and uh, the bass plate is also an aftermarket accessory. It also gets an accessory tire pressure monitoring system, so you don't really need to get down, go to a tire. Uh, the air pressure guy. You can check it on the bike itself. So that's a street scrambler. This one's priced at eight lakh fifty-five thousand rupees ex showroom. This one's also priced cheaper than the outgoing model. Of course, it gets a completely new set of electronics. On the street twin, you get now get two riding modes: rain and road. On the street scrambler, you get rain, road, and an off-road mode, a dedicated off-road mode, each with different throttle maps, different levels of traction control. On the off-road mode, however. The ABS and the traction control is switched off completely, so that for experienced riders you can have more fun riding off-road. So that's a new Triumph Street Scrambler. It's the entry-level scrambler in the Bonville family, and it's priced at eight lakh fifty-five thousand rupees ex showroom. So far, these bikes have been assembled in India from completely knockdown kits or CKD kits. But for now, the Street Twin and this one, the Street Scrambler. Have been brought in from Thailand. They're made in Thailand and brought in through the free trade agreement. So that's why Triumph has been able to price them very competitively. Eight lakh fifty-five thousand rupees ex showroom for a street scrambler. It gets three riding modes, a larger nineteen-inch front wheel, and the torque kicks in lower than the street twin. So that's the entry-level scrambler in the Triumph Bonville family, the twenty nineteen Triumph Street Scrambler. Well, both those bikes look absolutely gorgeous and yes Triumph's extended warranty scheme on both as well as the entire portfolio that it has in India actually comes in really handy because it gives you a warranty on a lot of uh, the components that the, uh, both these bikes have and actually gives you peace of mind too. Well we have all those details on carandbike.com but in the meanwhile let's take a break and on the other side we have the helmet review. Welcome back to CNB Bazaar Buzz. Well, now it's time to move on to the helmet review that we have been talking about. It's Steelbird and is bringing in something that is more functional, something that is more affordable. And of course, um, matches up to the Bluetooth connectivity options that are offered in helmets that are pricier than this. So here's Samir Contractor bringing you all the details on this new helmet. <laughs> It is not only difficult but downright dangerous to take phone calls when riding a two-wheeler. Yet some riders choose to answer their phone when on the move, using the loudspeaker or by sticking the phone inside the helmet. Rarely does a rider actually pull over to attend a phone call. However, there is now a safer alternative to access your phone when riding. Well, in today's technology-driven age, you do not want to pull over again and again to take calls or answer texts while riding. So a hands-free helmet will actually help. Well, you have a lot of options in the top-end segment of the helmets. There aren't any in the mass market space. Well, Steel Warrior has something called the SBA1 HF and that promises to be an inexpensive solution to that problem. The Steelbird SBA1 HF is a hands-free helmet that connects you with your smartphone, letting you take calls on the move. It's a plug-and-play device with two inbuilt speakers and a microphone that connects with the smartphone using an aux cable. The mic gets noise cancellation to reduce ambient noise, but the caller can still hear cars honking, engine sound and wind noise when on the move. The speech though remains audible throughout the call. Hello. Hi Sashan, yeah, tell me. Well, I'm shooting right now. I'll take an hour to come. I'm just riding right now. All right, thanks. Bye. 
The helmet worked well with our Android smartphone as we used it for music, navigation and Google Assistant. The systems can be accessed using just the one button on the helmet. And Steelbird says this helmet is waterproof and can be used in the Indian monsoon as well. While the phone connectivity option on the SBA1 HF is its uh, USB, it's also a very comfortable helmet to wear. At under 1200 grams, it's very light on the head and the padding is comfortable against your skin as well. But you don't get padding on the cheek and the chin, which is a downer. Uh, having said that, the peripheral view from the visor is good and you get a good view of the road. While uh, the vents, one at the bottom and one at the top and two retractors at the right make for good ventilation inside the helmet. Now the SBA1 HF is a city helmet and uh, once you cross speeds above 70 km per hour, it does get noisy inside. The helmet is available in three colours and two sizes. You do have to compromise with the micro ratchet fastener instead of a safer double D ring strap available on more premium helmets. A nice touch is the little strap pocket to store the aux cable which is thoughtful. The build quality though is basic and could have been better. Steelbird is targeting young buyers with its new hands-free helmet and at 2,500 rupees, this helmet is inexpensive and offers a unique and helpful feature. Considering that your next best option is a Bluetooth communication device that will cost you 6,000 to 8,000 rupees more over and above the cost of the helmet itself. The helmet also meets the new BIS standards which makes it legal on our roads and gets that ISI mark as well. What we don't know if it has undergone any international tests for helmet safety. In a country where two-wheeler safety is still not taken seriously, the SBA once novelty could see more riders wear a lid on their heads. That's a start to better riding, even if it is not the safest. It's quite an affordable helmet that and of course Though it's not with Bluetooth connectivity, only on auxiliary input unit, but still makes sense rather than shoving a mobile phone under your, uh, under your helmet and talking to people. That doesn't really help. And uh, though I would advise not to do either because at the end of the day, it's a distraction. So keep your phones away when you're riding for sure. Well, that's it for this episode of CNB Bazaar Buzz. I hope you enjoyed it. Do give us your feedback. We are available on all Twitter, Instagram and even YouTube. So shout us out at uh, currentbike.com as well and tell us what you want to see and what you want to hear from us as well. So, and finally, always wear your seat belts while driving and always, always wear a helmet when you're out there on two wheels. Goodbye.